Hey there folks, John here with Through My Lens, and today I'm coming to you with another knife review. We will be looking at the Zero Tolerance ZT0850, the 0850. Uh, now this is a video supplement to my written photo review that can be found on ThroughMyLens.org. Uh, uh, that's my website, and uh, in the written photo review you're going to find a lot more uh, details, specifications, uh, and a lot more uh, of the kind of nitty-gritty stuff that knife collectors and enthusiasts and people that will be interested in this knife are going to want to see. This is just a video supplement to kind of put some video footage of the knife out there for the community. Now I first saw this knife at SHOT Show this year. I went to SHOT Show 2017 back in January. Uh, did stop by the, the Zero Tolerance booth uh, probably the first day. Their booth was mobbed. There was no way I was getting in to, to see anything. So I waited a couple, three days. And by that time I was really tired, uh, really fatigued after uh, non-stop running around shot show not sleeping very well they showed me the collection and you know I, probably my perception looking back on it was colored by the level of fatigue that I had I wasn't really impressed with anything that I saw there wasn't really anything that I saw that that jumped out at me I remember seeing this knife and and kind of being you know lukewarm on it uh, wasn't until I got back from shot show a couple months later I you know I saw this information on the knife again, started looking at it, and I was like, wow, uh, you know, I can't believe this didn't blow me away at SHOT Show because uh, this, is, this has so many things that I'm looking for in a new knife. So let's kind of go over that right now. Uh, the 0850 uh, really is an extremely unique knife uh, for zero tolerance, and I have to give them kudos uh, as a company. They're doing uh, every year they do, you know, they push the boundaries. They kind of do new and interesting and innovative things with design, with blade steels, uh, just putting some of the top knives that you can buy, some of the best value out there. Uh, Zero Tolerance as a company just continues to really impress me, uh, and just about all the knives that I own are Zero, zero Tolerance knives at this point. I really like the company. This particular knife, I'll go ahead and uh, deploy the blade here. Uh, it is a collaboration between two pretty hot, famous knife makers uh, today, uh, Dmitry Sinkovich, and I'm probably am butchering that last name, uh, and Todd Rexford. Um, they uh, they created, uh, they collaborated and created a very small number of custom knives. I think it was only a couple of them uh, that sold for astronomical uh, prices, uh, but that design then. Uh, they went to, to ZT, uh, ZT went to them, and uh, you know they created this production version of that knife uh, that you see here today with some uh, you know kind of zero tolerance features incorporated into the design that they came up with. So really unique. Uh, you don't see a lot of that kind of collaboration uh, between two different knife makers, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the knife market very often. So very unique. Uh, you will see that. Uh, uh, it is deployed via thumb studs. Uh, that's that's pretty unique. Uh, m just about all the knives that Zero Tolerance has put out in the last several years has have been flippers. Uh, flippers are are what the market wants. They're really hot. Um, flipper, flipper, flipper. And you know, like most uh, knife fans who've been buying Zero Tolerance knives the past few years, it's been a pretty steady diet of flippers. I had to go back and look, and the last knife that, that I bought that had thumb studs that, that I've kept is this Zero Tolerance 0550. Uh, and I'll put them both here kind of for size comparison purposes. Uh, but uh, the 0550 came out back in 2012, five years ago. Uh, and I can't recall hardly any knives that Zero Tolerance has put out since then uh, that have been anything but flippers. Um, the Zero 550, it's one of their, their famous knives, one of their knives that really put them on the map, their first hinder collaboration. Um, it was really uh, the deployment on this knife. They've learned, Zero Tolerance has learned a lot since this knife. Uh, and, and, you know, every year they get better and better. But this knife, you, you really have to back off the, the pivot uh, and loosen it. You can see when I when I squeeze the knife here, uh, you can see a lot of movement there because the, the pivot's quite loose to give it a nice uh, deployment. Um, the, zero five, the 0850 uh, deploys perfectly out of the box. 
no pivot adjustment needed. It's on phosphorus uh, bronze washers and, uh, you know, old school, uh, you know, in that sense. Uh, so it's really neat. It's kind of a throwback. I like that. Uh, I like that it's a little different from the steady die to flippers. Um, it's kind of got a firearms, a gun theme to it. You can see it uh, in the uh, thumb stud and you can see it in the pivot. Uh, it kind of looks like a, a six shot revolver cylinder. Uh, you can see it also in the uh, backspacer, uh, that same theme. Uh, and you can see the this part of the backspacer kind of looks aluminum. Uh, the thumb stud and the backspacer are are milled aluminum, and you can see uh, just the detail that went into that milling of that backspacer. It's pretty impressive. Uh, aluminum's not an easy material to work with. Uh, a lot of people are critical of the use of aluminum in this knife because uh, it's a softer metal, but you know, from a weight saving standpoint. Um, and you know where it was used, I very much understand why Zero Tolerance did that, and I don't have any problem with it personally. Uh, the handle scales are uh, carbon fiber. Uh, again, uh, carbon fiber very hot right now. Uh, variations on carbon fiber are really hot. This is the first time I've ever seen carbon fiber that looks like this with this uh, blue weaved into it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I just love it. Uh, really, really uh, an attractive uh, knife from that perspective. Very lightweight. It is carbon fiber on both sides, uh, and it uses the patented zero tolerance uh, uh, sub frame lock that we first saw on the zero tolerance triple uh, seven, uh, the zero seven seven. I had a zero seven seven M three ninety. Liked it. Ultimately sold it because it was such a limited edition model. Uh, ZT really wasn't going to be making parts for it like they do their normal production models, so I didn't want to use it. Uh, because I didn't want to use it, I ended up not carrying a lot. But I really liked the uh, the titanium subframe lock in with the carbon fiber scales because it was so light. This is just a bit over four ounces. You can wear this with dress pants, no problem. This is such a great EDC knife because it's such a lightweight and because you know of that uh, the size of that blade. It's uh, about it's uh, about uh, uh, 3.75 inches uh, with a five with a five inch uh, handle. So uh, uh, you know, really nice uh, knife. You get a lot of blade length. Uh, uh, the handle uh, is very ergonomic. Feels really good in hand. It actually feels better in hand than the triple seven did because it's a little thicker. Uh, the triple seven was really thin. Uh, you know, here, so it just didn't feel right to me in hand. This one feels a lot better. It's got some nice jimping on the blade. You can really uh, uh, dig in on that jimping and right where the thumb stud is. Uh, so if you did have to use it defensively, no concerns there. You can also choke up for more detail work uh, or for a different kind of cut uh, by putting your, your, your thumb here on, uh, on this kind of nice ramp that's built into the blade. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that blade for a second. Uh, the blade shape, very unique. Uh, it's kind of, uh, um, it's just a unique shape. Uh, that's, that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, I think when I first saw it, it shot show, I didn't really care for it, but then, you know, taking another look at it, I was like, hey, that, you know, I, I'm okay with it, particularly for a knife that I'm really going to use. And because this is a production you know, not a limited edition knife, um, I'm okay with using this. Uh, it's got, you know, that brushed finish, which is, it's going to show a lot of, uh, <clears throat> a lot of wear more easily than other finishes, like a, uh, like a stone wash finish, but it's so attractive. I love that brush finish that ZT has done in recent years, uh, kind of started with, uh, uh, the ZT 0562 here, uh, which has the same brushed finish. Uh, but uh, uh, really like the knife from a blade steel perspective. Again, uh, you really got to hand it to zero tolerance for uh, the knife uh, blade steels that they use. This is a, a CPM 20 CV. It's a chemical equivalent to Bowler M390. Uh, it's chemically almost identical and is going to have that same uh, 
you know, long lasting wear. You don't have to sharpen this, this steel every week. And for a knife that I'm going to EDC and use, I don't want to have to sharpen it every week. So I love Bowler M390. I'm expecting the same kind of properties from the CPM 20 CV uh, that's, that's used in uh, this knife. So I'm really happy with, with that premium blade steel choice. Kudos to, to Zero Tolerance. Uh, I've been carrying this for about a week and really, really enjoying it. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's attractive to me. Uh, it's very functional, very easy to carry, has some really unique features. I've really missed this titanium subframe block, uh, reminiscent of the uh, 777, uh, although I wish they hadn't put the patent number right on the, uh, the, uh, uh, the titanium frame lock there. Uh, but, oh well. Uh, really like the pocket clip. That's a nice milled uh, pocket clip. Again, very reminiscent of the 777. Uh, you know, it carries well. It's not ultra deep carry, but it's pretty deep carry. Very visually attractive. Has a nice feel to it as well. Uh, just a little bit more premium than the typical stamped ZT uh, pocket uh, clip that they put on a lot of their knives. So I really like that. And uh, <clears throat> the knife really just has a premium feel. It's got kind of a premium price too. I think it's it's about a $320 knife which is uh, you know, a little bit on the pricier side, but for the features that you get, uh, I think this, this knife is just fantastic. Love that it's firearm themed because I am a gun guy. Um, uh, you know, the, more, the more I carry it, the more I use it. And it just, because it's not a flipper, it feels like a breath of fresh air to me. Um, there's just nothing I don't like about this knife. Highly recommended, two thumbs up. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. I want to keep it short. Uh, again, check out the uh, the written photo review for some great photos uh, and some uh, some uh, you know more uh, lengthy, detailed discussion on this knife. Take care. God bless. We'll see you in the next video.